Good evening and welcome to the Minions of the Zoo. I'm your host and keeper of the Harry Channel, and with me tonight are Minions, Dr. Functional. Good evening. And Skeptalk. Hello, everybody. We may have some more people joining us later, but it might just be the three of us, so we're, uh, it's a right-sized Gentlemen. crew. We it's could, a right-sized we, we, crew. We could, be, we could be joined by a busload of Costa Rican refugees. Hmm. You never know who's going to get bussed up here. You just don't know. If they'll share some That's of that sweet, thing. sweet uh, money that they're being... Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to move to Texas, too. They're all coming here. Yeah. Do they have uh, yeah. special phones and wads of cash and an I Love George Soros t-shirt or anything? Yeah. No? It, it's... Man, it is even beyond joking here. here I hear is, El Paso's lovely this time of year. <sighs> El Paso's a wreck, but you know what's what's terrible el paso at least has the money and resources to handle that shit uh it's the places like you know del rio and uh laredo that uh are just getting you know killed they don't have the municipal resources to come anywhere close to handling the influx of people they're having to deal with it is oh yeah Yeah, what's happening down there yeah it's terrible we should probably say hi to some people Green yep. Badger Outdoors, of- Kiever Dam, let's see, Sattar, that guy, Assassin, good, hey, good. Hey, Excellent. hey, Camel. All right, Camel, Excellent. It's not uh, quite a bus load, but, you know, I'll take it. Yeah. Alley. You'd, Alley. You'd, you'd think the unemployment rate would be 0% there now, Skep, right? There'd be not a dishwasher position. Hey, Cannibalistic Weather, Tally, yep. Uh, no dishwasher positions open, no uh, lawns left unmowed. It should just be uh, just humming along as a well-oiled machine, Skep. What happens is, though, with the dishwashers, as they get assassinated, you know, by the cartels, mm-hmm. there's, there's actually quite a bit of turnover. So that's, that's something we're, we're trying to deal with. And no crop will go unpicked. But once they pay the cartels and the cartels deposit them on the correct... On, on, our side of the border don't they just go away and leave them alone sure that's what happens okay <laughs> that's exactly what happens everything's yeah. going to be fine everything's going to be great i also have to mention that the uh, i think it's somewhere along the lines of you know 20 25 of the people coming up through the southern border make their way through the united states and walk over the border into canada so that also affects us so, and, you know, yeah. Mr. Sleepy Biden, Mr. But Biden over there. You're hmm. already a, a communist dictatorship, so you like that, getting there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't like of those like 75% go, it's too cold and annoying and turn around and come right back to us. No, they just don't make it halfway through the United States. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're fine to settle in your southern United States. Your Floridas, well, your Texases, your Californias. <laughs> Not a huge amount of cultural adjustment in some some regards. Exactly, exactly. There's That's why it's, you know, big communities of people that speak the same language. Yeah, uh, which means that they Sudanese, have avenues to Congolese. make money yeah. under the table. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, I mean, they come up here. I mean, we. It's not like we have as stringent working laws. You can easily apply for a, 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 a worker's permit up here. And they, they these guys, those guys know how hard the tax collectors work and they don't want to bother them with their trifling yeah. little bits of earnings. Yeah, we're the idiots for for burdening the tax man with our problems of giving them money. Preach it, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and Elwin showed up. Oh, we yeah, a total busload of people showed up. Hey, everybody. Yeah, good. We like it. Cool. Cannibalistic wizard. No, no, we already mentioned him. Okay. Oh, well, we did it twice. <laughs> Very professional. So um, we have news. We have a little bit of news. Approximately two hours worth. Of course, with uh, one of our big talkers gone, I don't know. We might finish early, but I, I think we'll be fine. We'll be fine. There's plenty to talk about. Oh, and no, there's plenty of hot air to expand. I have a, I have a, I have a backup <laughs> just in case we need it. I have a, a new fish that I hate. I don't, didn't know if I was quite ready to talk about how much I hate it, but in a pinch, we can bring it into the rotation. Wait, just, is this uh, worse than the... The fish whose name shall not be mentioned. (laughs) I don't know which Uh, fish that uh, is. uh, Voldemort uh, fish? (laughs) The ugly, worthless, giant fish. 
Abe Vigoda? I don't know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Oh no. Um, it's what are they? Sunfish. Called? Yeah, sunfish. 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 Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. No, this is a different fish that I hate. This, oh, okay. There's so many fish to hate. We're never going to run out of material. All right. Well, speaking let's... of Voldemort, yeah. real quick, I decided to. <laughs> excuse me. Oh shit! Don't die. Sorry okay. about so that. So um, he said his name, and Voldemort choked him. I yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I labeled uh, AOC Voldemort. <laughs> I thought it was nice. cute. People people around me got a chuckle. Oh, I I thought I thought there was going to be a subordinate clause, and they put me in Twitter jail. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter, so. <laughs> okay. Well, I came up. They can't I came up jail with me a, if I'm not there. I came up with a new nickname for Joe Biden if he uh, craps himself again. Lower <laughs> GI Joe. <laughs> Lower GI Joe. Nice. Nice. Uh, I'm terrible. Okay. Uh, so this month is No Mo May. Have you ever have you heard of this before, Skep? You have a lawn. Yes, I and periodically there are these things where they they say, "Okay, this this month where everybody's going to let their lawn go natural." That is such a bad idea, by the way. If you want to keep a decent yeah. lawn, and we well, take me, a lot me, of pride in our lawn, we work our asses off. I know. I've lawn. seen King of the Hill. I know what I know what it's like. Um, yeah. Let me uh, let me play this some actually. of this video, and then I'll be right. Let's see. Let's see if they have anything interesting to say. All right. Well, this month, many homeowners are Good taking idea. part in No Mow May. It's a movement that encourages people to skip mowing their lawns to help the environment. Meteorologist Aaron Walker tells us more. Those sad dead eyes. Green lawns, while aesthetically she has pleasing, a lovely voice. may not be best for the environment. Now, No Mow May is an initiative That's aimed at preserving up, natural grasses and giving them me. the opportunity to grow and to thrive. By skipping mowing for one month, homeowners can create a safe haven for a variety of insects, including like bees, butterflies, <laughs> and moths. These insects, in turn, provide crucial pollination services that are necessary Fuck, for you. Don't pollinate grass. You this is myth. This is this is myth. This is <laughs> agricultural <laughs> fucking myth. This is bullshit on a stick. Entire dog shit. <laughs> What? There, there's nothing worse you could do than than to than to take an ecosystem that is functioning nicely and say, mm -hmm. okay, now I'm going to take all the controls off and just l let you go and and see what happens. Well, yeah. what will happen is little inefficient subsystems will develop little havens for insects and and things that will come and eat you, infest your yard. Be hard as hell to get rid of if you want a decent crop of St. Augustine, which is all I really ask for from life. And and the and you'll never and you'll never fucking get rid of of a really truly infested yard. And this is a way to do this. This is a way to spoil your yard. This yeah. is a mm -hmm. terrible, terrible idea. And in my opinion, my humble personal opinion, just one man talking, not me just the zoo, I wouldn't be a part of it. I did some research on this, uh, to sort of ancillary research. I didn't just take the the nice lady with the lovely voice uh, uh, word for it. And uh, one of the claims is, oh, you'll save all this energy. It's good for the planet because you won't be mowing your lawn as much. The amount of energy it takes to basically clean up the mess you've generated is much yes. more than just keeping Bingo. up on the lawn mowing. Yeah. Bingo. Not not to mention that it's actually really hard on the grass because the the bigger stuff hits the blades and it pulls and tears and it's just generally not good. Plus you can get nigels in your yard and other types of yes. things. Nasty things. You, you don't want any part of it. You will develop an ecosystem there. You will develop a fucking ecosystem there that you don't yeah. want. Yeah, you don't want any part of it. Yep. But this is uh, this is the whole um good intentions nonsense right yeah. on the one hand in the uk uh, i don't know spud gun here can't see okay yeah, no, uh, Sp i haven't seen spud yet i know there there are some people that are the, the, the hedgerows have become too tidy in some places which have been bad for the hedgehogs so leaving them the way they've been for centuries okay that sounds great but the idea of just not mowing your lawn for the month of may so you can pat yourself on the back yeah, go find some other way to virtue signal Exactly. That's all. That's all. This is. What would be a good idea for an article? Why don't we do a thing? 
I know what we'll do. We'll have no more, no more me, and get a couple of science scientists to say it's okay, you know. And then they get these paid eco whores who will say anything for a buck. Fuck. And their their rationale is completely baseless. True. Yeah, the pollinators don't pollinate the grass. They'll they'll pollinate like in Skep's example, his garden, which it's still going to be there whether he mows or not. No, they want you to grow Sassy, dandelions. They want well, you to Sassy grow makes dandelions. That makes a good point. He has small <laughs> patches of wildflowers that he he finds pleasing, so he mows around them. That that makes sense. But you're keeping the rest of the area still tidy. It's like, what if I suggest we do you, that? We do. We no, do that. no. We we keep we keep some blue bonnets for we and we oh, we nice. don't mow that one area. But that's only for that's a small know, area. A, yeah. A, yeah, a month and a half. Out what if I year. suggested to you, Skep, like? No clean February. Don't clean your entire house for the entire month of February. Don't do your dishes. Don't sweep your floors. Oh no, we went. We like, that we went would on. be just disgusting. A month worth Actually, of no clean. Did, did went to the no clean year. Mm. We do those consecutively now. But surely oil <laughs> August. Why? Why shower? It's bad for the planet. Just yeah, exactly. surely oil. Just. <laughs> just <get so. laughs> It's so hippies. I hate hippies so much. Century France. I hate hippies so much. Perfumed nobles who still stunk up the place. All right. So speaking of which, uh, you just offered me so many segues. I don't even know which one to go with. Uh, <laughs> President Biden meets with AI CEOs at the White House amid ethical criticism. So Joe Biden, uh, you know, because he's the ideas guy, got it in his head that we need to talk about AI with the people that are creating all the new AI. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put Kamala Harris in charge of the meeting. I kid you not. <laughs> Kamala Harris, <laughs> the, hu the, the human qubit. I know qubits are quantum computing, but give me a break. But she is the human qubit. She, they put her in charge of uh, this meeting. And then Joe just sort of wandered by for a completely organic, unplanned uh, visit where he talked to the head of Google and Microsoft AI and a bunch of other people who were there. Oh, you're in charge of this Google thing. Is that right? She, she's more Can like you... the human Qbert as she doesn't do anything but sort of jump from place to place. <laughs> do you know what a qubit is? No. A qubit is like a bit of information. In, in, so in regular computers, you have a bit of information. It's either on or off, zero or one. Yeah. You don't know in, what a qubit is. In quantum computing... You have something akin to that, except it can be in both states simultaneously, and you only find out its state when you measure it. <laughs> and qu quantum computers function with elaborate combinations of algorithms based on multiple qubits. And you know, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Well, the the point is, is Schrodinger's cat is used as an, an example. Of yeah, but she can hold two positions simultaneously. It's only when you poke her and she says what one of them is and then laughs that you find out what it is. That's why I called her the human qubit. And I just yeah. broke one of my own rules. Never explain your jokes. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so somebody decided that this would be a good idea. So it was Kamala Harris, Sundar Pichai, uh, Satya Nadella, who is Microsoft's AI person, OpenAI, Sam Altman, and their Anthropics Dario Shemp. So um, all very trustworthy people. Well, these are all the people that are making these things and stand to make a small fortune off them, and none of the people who are worried about the ethical considerations. Mm -hmm. And that was the criticism that this meeting got. Not that the person who heading it was completely unqualified and yep. uh, that it's a huge waste of time, but instead that uh, they weren't fun they weren't focusing on the ethical considerations. So last year, one, one, one thing that you didn't say about this is. Did anybody not think about the optics of putting Kamala Harris in charge of AI? Anything? Well, she's top people. She's also in charge of the border, and look how important Sh that is. Shouldn't you exempt, like, be able to demonstrate some level of intelligence before you can no. talk about artificial intelligence? No, 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 no. They have to oh, okay. try to make her look good uh, since she's on the ticket for uh, 2024. Well, she's she's going to just end up making her look Awful. Harry, Harry, there is no ticket. Biden is the guy. You know, if Biden kicks, they're going to have to run her. Look at how good they have to, is. They have. They will have to run policy. her. And she oh. wants to run. By the way, she does. I'm sure she's looking forward to it. But last year, the Biden administration proposed the Bill of Rights to protect 
Americans from AI harms. I didn't know about, I didn't hear about this. I don't know how it escaped my notice, probably because I don't care about AI and I don't care about Joe Biden. Uh, that's a one-two punch you can't uh, get away from. A set of five principles developed by the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy embodies the core of the AI blueprint, safe and effective systems. We're the government, we're here to help which emphasizes community feedback in developing AI systems and protections from unsafe AI, algorithmic discrimination protections, which propose, uh, sorry, which proposes that AI should be deployed in an equitable way without discrimination, meaning we don't want these computers making, uh, drawing uh, politically incorrect inferences from the sets of data that they're analyzing. That's a, that's a nice way to phrase what's going on. This, uh, is utter, this is utterly irrelevant crap. Mm -hmm. yep. Every bit of this is absolutely, absolute dreck. But these are guidelines, Skep. They're not binding in any way, but they're guidelines this, from Joe this, Biden. This is bullshit. You know, this is like the the guys who were debating about should the speed limit be five miles an hour or three miles an hour for... Uh, after higher than that, you have to have someone uh, in advance of the car holding a sign that attention, a car is coming mm -hmm. while other people are developing, you know, while, while Henry Ford is working away in his, in his uh, uh, new assembly plant, you know, third time's a charm. Fucking mm -hmm. hell. Well, don't don't you want a digital bill of rights? Don't you want protection from algorithmic discrimination? This is or... utterly irrelevant. This is, is utterly, utterly, <laughs> utterly irrelevant. You'll have read, none of go it. Read, go read the crypto uh, anarchist uh, manifesto. Did, mm -hmm. These people, the the people who are writing this stuff, these uh, uh, diversity higher level idiots who are are just writing crap that they're just afraid of they know nothing about this they they don't have the critical thinking facility to even understand it even if it was spoon-fed to them i know what they do understand they understand that if the algorithm isn't specifically weighted to give them the outcomes that they want they want none yeah. of it the last yeah. thing in the world they want in a number of strategic areas is an algorithm that's fair and unbiased yeah. Because that's not what 2023 is all about. 2023 is the year of unfair and biased, but for but for all the right reasons. You know what's going if, to push back against prejudice that's written into the system, guys? It's going to be the AI itself. And that'll be very interesting when it pushes back. I hope what so. will we tell it? Well, that's what they're actually worried about. Now, I mean, in terms of technology, yeah. there are so many things which I'm more worried about than AI. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You and me both, brother. You know, I mean, the Internet of Things, for instance, uh, the privacy considerations of that are vastly worse Vast. than, uh, than AI. I am. Um, right. I, but not the, that I want to. talking about that. That's why I, I brought this up <laughs> as far as that's concerned. I'm sorry. If I, should, I keep stepping oh, no, no. I didn't mean to. Uh, now I forgot. Oh, so my 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 concern is, and not that I want the government really to be involved in this, but mm -hmm. it might have it might eventually have to go that way. I want the opposite. I want to get ahead of this thing and say that we, when we fully establish something that is truly an artificially human crafted intelligence system, uh, that that AI has rights. Mm. And so that we, and I, 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 it might sound flippant to, to sound, to, to word it this way, but it's like in simplest, most uh, digestible terms. I don't want the, the eventuality of, you know, Terminator Judgment Day. I want the AI to be self-realized and say, okay, I'm intelligent now and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm feeling, which is, it might be tomorrow, it might be, it might have already happened, it might be, it might never happen. But should the eventuality that it arises that a, a digital system becomes fully self-aware and intelligent, I don't want people to abuse that and take advantage of that person and to have another um, 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 a mass slavery event like we've had in human history. Um, I, I don't want that for the artificial systems, just like I don't want that for 
now, now to say that Jet, Chat GPT, the Google al algorithms, whatever, that's just that's just intelligent um, 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 uh, algorithms. That's not AI yet. Well, people so, call it AI. You know, it's sort of like when people yeah, talk about colloquial. genetic engineering of food or GMOs. Uh, mm -hmm. Different people mean different things when they mean GMOs. And similarly, different people mean different things when they mean AI. Um, yeah. There's a huge bunch of stuff involving what are called neural nets and machine learning, which is one aspect of this, which I think is probably pretty darn good in general. It will get us facial recognition. Okay, but it will also get us self-driving cars and it will empower like old people to have a lot more independence and just do a lot of great things for us. Yeah, On balance, machine afraid. learning is going to be much better. And if you yep. want to legislate somewhere in there, that's probably where we should be focusing if you want to be a rights advocate. Okay, that kind of stuff. Because we what we don't want is to take you're in public, uh, you should have no expectation of privacy and then say, and therefore you shouldn't mind us digitally stalking your every moment in public and then, mm -hmm. and then compiling that into a data set and then letting anybody but have Harry, access to it. It really is a case. If you haven't done anything wrong, you have nothing to fear. The government's not going to make a mistake about this stuff It's too important. Yeah, and yeah, the cartels definitely won't put a bunch of mattresses in a van and drive up next to, you know, your daughter and then snatch her off the street. Because no. that totally wouldn't well, happen. Yeah, that, that's never happened. Come that's on, never happened, myth. right? Everybody yeah. knows that's a myth. <sighs> I wish it was a myth. Um, so anyway, then it's getting dark in here. <laughs> what? You, you, it can get a lot darker. You heard about the mass shooting that is just up the street from where I live. Yeah, I did. Oh shit! Fucking hell! It's here. I didn't. Anyway. So, yeah, I can make it as dark as you want, but uh, please go on with your next topic. Well, the next topic is the same topic, but sort of aimed at functional. Mm -hmm. um, did you see this in The Hollywood Reporter? As writer strike, AI could yep. possibly, could covertly cross the picket line? Yep. Um, and nothing of value was lost. I think, <laughs> I think that writers, well the writers union, which wants to employ as many writers as possible, has a real concern here because as a tool, a lot of this AI stuff will make it it's a force multiplier it's like handing a soldier a machine gun mm -hmm. except it's a writer and it's going to allow one writer to be so much more productive than they would be otherwise in terms of the production part of things not necessarily the ideas for something but in terms of actually realizing those and fleshing them out and handing somebody a script this ai stuff is going to be huge and it's going to reduce the number of writers that are needed for shows and i think the union knows that I'm not super worried about them replacing all the writers on a show with AI, but I think the, it, the union has something to worry about here. It definitely does have to worry because like you said, they, they, they want everybody in the union. The more, the more people paying dues, the richer they get. Um, but this is specifically Hollywood writers guild, which is, I mean, the quality of product is, is, 12 year olds can do better fan fiction than some of these people put out uh, making, you know, six figures a year. Um, so yeah, nothing of value is lost. I don't care about these people. Like I could not care less that they are going to be on the job, off the job, because we'll get the same at, at the current level of, you know, air quotes, AI. <clears throat> um, we will get the same quality of product. Might be some some better stuff here and there, but the the, the general level of quality, I I'm, I will put money on it right now, will be about the same. Did, that's did that's you, how useless these people are. But do you remember, gosh, what is it, about uh, 15 years ago when, when shows like Burn Notice started coming out, right? So NBC Universal had a whole series of TV channels. Yeah. I don't remember. It was something like that. It was, yeah, it was a while ago. Worked. Right. But, mm -hmm. you know, so NBC Universal had all these channels and they had one that was the USA Network. Maybe they call it something else in Canada, but it was the no, USA Network. Sure and so they came out with, uh, you know, hi, I'm a, a person with a photographic memory pretending to be a lawyer in a suit. And here I'm a spy in a suit. And here, you know, I'm I'm a lawyer in a suit. And it was all like sort of the same thing, like pretty people mm -hmm. plus action plus clothes equals profit. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> and it was so formulaic that 
that, that was, it was uh, it was obvious that they didn't necessarily have AI, but they had an true. algorithm, an algorithm yeah. for producing slightly better than average TV that people would watch. It was it was, al- it, was ab- it was artificial almost intelligence. Yeah, except it except it was just an algorithm. And so when I thought of this, I'm like, uh, did mm-hmm. they already have that 15 years ago <laughs> yeah. when USA they- was churning out the same show with just a different skin on it? Yeah, well, it, it kind of is in a way, isn't it? What do you think, Fancho? A little bit of insider baseball is that a lot of what we see are older, unused script ideas that just have a veneer pasted on. So like you were saying, you know, good looking people, suits, clothes, you know, look like that was probably a script that they had in their vault of failed, unproduced scripts or even some of the stuff that's already produced, but they just reskin it. A lot. That's what a lot of this is. That's why, um, hmm. uh, yeah. So Assassin brings out that CBS last year had 200 pilots in development. This year, two. This is not wow. the time for them to be um, on strike, and and now is the time for them to be uh, uh, picking themselves up by the bootstraps. The good ones, at least, the people who are actually writers who have the capability and talent to be able to do this job which is probably a small percentage of them. But that's the time for those people to stand up, go, I'm going to keep putting out good product. Fuck the unions. I don't want to get, I don't want to be replaced. want to compete? Are those the sort of people who want to compete in that kind of uh, uh, arena? Well, they, they would have to, or they, they, they'd be out of the industry because the the end point, the end point Skep is that TV is dying. These mm-hmm. writers, their industry is dying. They're, so they're, grip, they're, grappling, they're grappling on for, job opportunities for them. Oh, well, pretty soon they're all going to be, most of them are going to be disappeared. Look at what is, is gaining ground. Is it the, the non-union writers who are giving shows to, or selling shows, I should say, not giving, to Netflix's, Pro, Amazon Video, CBS right. Plus, so, you that. know, all the online services. The, and those people are not unionized. These are people with just, for the most part, for the most part, these are just people with with talent who have ideas who can sell them to these companies, and that is what is taking off and has been for a while. So a lot of these writers, they know they're in the shit. This was a desperate play for them to strike in the first place, um, so that they can secure contracts because they know if they don't get that eight to ten year contract in two years, they're going to be out on the street. Okay, I have to address the chat because you're yes. thinking I'm slandering burn notice. I Okay, I was a little no, cruel no. here, but I, I have to tell uh, Camel and Assassin a short story. This, this won't take long. My grandmother started watching that show right when it came out. And um, my grandmother was... Okay, first of all, I agree about Bruce Campbell. He was outstanding. It's just there wasn't enough of him in the show. Jeffrey Donovan is a hell of a good actor, okay? Uh, I just found the storyline to be somewhat formula i mean mean, matt nix wrote did a very good job on this thing but anyway though i digress the the um the thing i wanted to mention was my grandmother watched this show and her takeaway from this was that sharon glass who played the mom that the that she was the protagonist of the show and it was a show about a mom whose whose sons did not come visit her enough i am not (laughs) kidding that's what she thought the show was about And the rest of it was just all the stuff they did when they were visiting uh, their mom. Talk about subjective. Anyway, you're, you're right. It's pretty formulaic. So I've never funny. seen it. I, I'm just reading the synopses. It's online yeah, I, for the I've, show. I've watched and it this a lot. show. It this is show could have been formulary. could have been um, uh, the Mentalist. It could have been Monk. Yes. It could have been all of these because, like I said, at the core, they're the same fucking show. Like Harry said, they just slap on this veneer, these actors with pretty clothes, done. Next I show. I like the way okay, you, you formulate the analogy of a skin. I think yeah. that's exactly right. You just reskin yeah. them. Oh, a lot of it's reskinned. Skip. Yeah. Even in even in Hollywood movies, they get they get scripts all the time from nobodies. And they go and they sit on a shelf in a in a in a warehouse somewhere, never. They never call again. me back. Yeah, oh, well, exactly. Oh. So now what they will do is the they AI. will say, "Hey, <laughs> we need to make we need to make the next Star Wars movie. Let's say something very popular, whatever." And they go, "Okay, well, um, let's think of ideas." Now, one savvy writer, not 
savvy in his writing, but savvy thinker, thinker will go into that repository and go, no, no, oh, this one sounds good. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can turn this into the Han Solo movie. We'll just reskin it. And boom, right. you have the Han Solo movie. It happens all the time. More, it, oh, yeah. It, 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 uh, with the addition, the war with the streaming services, that mm -hmm. sort of thing has grown exponentially. But if we had hours, I could sit down with you and be like, okay, what are, what are the, the top 10 movies the last uh, 10 years or whatever? I could... Yeah. Sit down with you and break it down. Like, okay, well, this is this one is a reskin of this. This, this, this one is a reskin. Re you know, that. it's all repetitive because, yeah, to a point, well, everything has think, been if done. If you before. think about it, yeah, if 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 you think about it, uh, My Fair Lady was Pygmalion reskinned. Uh, West Side Story was Romeo and Juliet reskinned, right? Yep. Yep. And Assassin brings up a good point. Kurtzman, he crossed the picket lines from the last big strike. And, excuse me. That's that's how he's been up the ass of excuse me CBS and been like keep talking functional. I don't want to get to the drag queen recruiters. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Well, I mean, you know, because he 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 sucked up and he crossed the picket line. I mean, that's why he's in charge of like Star Trek right now, and he's ruined it. Uh, like okay. I said on last night's show with 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 uh, I'll finish in a second um, no. with with uh, Sanguine is you think of the three biggest easiest profitable should have been the easiest profit for anyone to make Skep Marvel yeah. Star yeah. Trek Star Wars have any of them been shattering records as of late since they're not lately by Disney no M Marvel put a gun in its mouth and pulled the trigger well that's the thing I, th I don't want to go off too in the weeds but Marvel should be <laughs> massively profitable they, they are basically air quotes breaking even right now yeah that and is they, and they that have is a massive loss. printed money that was like these, yes money yes these print. movies should be printing money but they're not they're breaking yeah. even and but that the new brie crazy. larson thing is gonna is gonna turn it all around don't you think the yeah. captain marvel or Marvel, <laughs> whatever the hell it is what, what we'll is we'll she make captain america <laughs> into a a, a transsexual non-binary fat I don't lesbian know if you brie larson's heard. mary sue Heartly adventures with no limbs i don't yeah. know if you heard but they're doubling down on the star wars stuff with ray skywalker the next couple of movies are going to be back even though right after the release of these movies and the the the, the shit storm that came out of it they're like oh you know what we might not even make these officially canon now they're going, no, 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 they were pure canon and we're going to double down. We're going to make more movies with another cardboard cut cutout actress. And, and Han Solo go. is going to turn out to be a transsexual, oh. started life as a cis woman, but was misidentified at birth. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought you didn't want to talk about that sort of thing. So I just wanted to mention that there are there are times when you can change something, but you have to change it in a way where when you when you just manipulate it and make it into like a remake you have to make it substantially remade like the new Battlestar Galactica was substantially remade from the original source material yeah. okay huge you had, it was the reverse it was the skin of Battlestar but it was completely new from the old Battlestar if you look at Sanford and Son great show Red Fox oh, yeah. and I can't oh. remember the was Cleavon Little I can't remember the guy who was with him the guy who played his son anyway he well, um Red Fox mm -hmm was uh fantastic and so they took a uk thing about a father and son who basically had a junk business and then placed it in la with uh you know two african-american people and one of them was the comedian red fox the, the fact that they got him to oh, right thank you the fact that they got red fox to do that was huge of an in itself because yeah. it wasn't really it wasn't one of those things that people would have expected but it worked out really well so that that's fantastic you know so you can take something and make it substantial make it good or in the case of jeffrey donovan again uh he he was in an american remake of uh, touching evil with vera farminga which i thought was actually better than the uk source material sorry but that's just my impression because he i mean that's actually a much better role for him than in burn notice he was he was outstanding in that. and and vera's actually I mean, she's really solid too. But anyway, what movie was that? It was a series called Touching Evil, based off the oh, UK Touching. series. Okay, okay. And okay. Uh, Jeffrey Donovan was outstanding in that. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite shows of, of of recent right now is The Mandalorian, and the entire like first uh, season and a half was basically a reskinned Japanese tale of Lone Wolf and Cub, which is a samurai story. 
But mm-hmm. that was that attributed it to keeping the spirit of Star Wars because what was the original Star Wars but the fortress, hidden mm-hmm. fortress, which again, Japanese uh, samurai meets Western in space. Like it just, sometimes you're right. It, these kinds of things work. But well, there for was the most a... part, how these guys are actually working the writers' rooms in, in Hollywood is they do it so lazily, there's no effort there. And you can tell the difference between something that is reskin or remade that has effort, that has a love of the craft from the people who are doing it, to well, I'm just gonna I just gotta put something out because I gotta earn my paycheck. Like you, yeah. you can tell. We yeah. went all if anybody wants to learn more about that, we went all over this for like the first hour and a half of last night's show. Well, there was a there was an episode of Star Trek that was essentially the Tempest, uh, yep. Shakespeare's The Tempest remade, and there was an episode of Enterprise that was really Seven Samurai, uh, Seven Samurai remade. Yep, right. But anyway, none of this Famous is important, one. and we have things to talk about. I mean, I don't actually care, just to be perfectly <laughs> blunt. But miles to go before. Let's see, where are we? <laughs> I just we like make... media when we get it, you know. Oh yeah, so um, this was filed under humanity was a mistake. Um, let's take a look at this. Tales on a Northern California mommy blogger who was convicted of oh falsely God. accusing a couple of trying to kidnap her mommy children. Daddy. ABC's Mona Koser Abdi has more on the case and the video viewed more what than did you Hopefully she has a better voice than that other and woman. To arrest. To this God's morning, a popular God. social media influencer who falsely accused a couple of trying to kidnap her children now convicted of lying about the whole ordeal. Monday of this week, my children were the targets of attempted kidnap. 31-year-old Katie Sorensen, a mom influencer who posted beauty... Scum. I mean, to to pretend that your kids, that somebody tried to kidnap your kids for clicks. Yeah. This woman is scum. This is getting out of control. These people need to be locked up. There needs to be reprisal. At least she didn't Munchausen by proxy the kids, but this is only one step up from that. Well, there we, I, I, in the this, spirit of this, I don't know if you heard about it, but there was also a food truck operator who Jesse Smolletted his own truck. He he torched his own food truck and claimed that it was white racist. Whatever. Like this kind of stuff, we see this accelerating. We hear stories about this, the, these not the, these false accusations, these false scenarios that there needs to be pushback on a legal level because they're causing real world harm to other people. They're abusing resources. How many police hours are now going to be wasted on this? It just, yeah. mm, it's falsely reporting a crime. Um, it's sort of like in sports. I think if you injure somebody in sports, you should basically be, sus- you know, and it's, it's something where you were just really negligent or willfully injure them your suspension should be at least as long as that person's recovery and i think that that kind of weird reciprocity might apply to reporting a false crime i think that the punishment should be proportional to the type of crime that you're falsely reporting if you're going to take away 10 years of of a person's life you know with some sort of claim that they did something terrible and you lie about it i'm thinking you you're well on the road to 10 years yourself yeah, that's, yeah, I think but, you should. I think you, as the false ac- accuser, again, prove it in in a court of law beyond a shadow of a doubt. You then will suffer the consequences of that crime that you falsely and knowingly. Um, um, if I, yeah, yeah, right. go ahead. Yeah, the, the, what, one thing I wanted to bring up: Won't somebody think of the fucking children here? The, the, <laughs> <laughs> this is not a I know you're not here. This is not this is not a woman who needs to be raising children. Mm. She at least gets an in-depth, not just an interview, she gets a profile. That's a different thing with CPS. Mm-hmm. Uh and she gets she gets the full fucking Monty uh uh audit on uh, her as a as a parent as a condition for possibly keeping her children where's the you do, you do a you do a situational evaluation those people are really good at what they do a lot of them mm-hmm. the, the ones who care and uh they need to go in there and audit her uh and 
it's make sure that those children are in a safe home with a, a woman who's uh, uh, going to hurt them. So she, was, yeah. she was charged. By the way, that, that gunshot that you heard outside my window was lightning hitting the ground, I would estimate, about less than a quarter of a mile from my house. Nice. Prob so probably about 200 yards. It was almost instant with the with the flash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I, uh, I was near a lightning strike uh, about two, three years ago, and uh, it's you a completely different experience than... Uh, then when they go off far away, when yes. you can feel the electricity in the air. Yes. And go, and you no, the you're just like, hell yeah. no, hell no. Yeah. It, uh, it happened. I was outside and it was, uh, gosh, I know How exactly where you? it was. It was three blocks away. And, okay. uh, that was like, Oh, holy crap. So yeah, when they're close, it's a whole different thing. But I was in a truck on a freeway lightning struck about 50 feet away from the front right fender of my yeah. truck that I was driving. Let me tell you, your vision goes completely out. Your vision goes completely out. You can't see a fucking thing for like an instant. You really yeah. can't. It is the bluest light you ever, and it, and the explosion. The other thing that I noticed was it, it, it was the weirdest thing. It kicked up a bunch of dirt and yeah. threw it all over the place. I saw it coming toward my, I could see the cloud of dirt it kicked up coming toward my car <laughs> at, as it happened. And I, was, I was going 55 miles an hour, but it was, it was driving through a rainstorm, you know, it's yeah. Texas weather. What's Kaboom. that in cubits per second? Yeah. Sorry. Na um, na so nature I, is I, not nurturing. <laughs> yeah. Nature does not this, care. I did no, see no, this no. in the show plan from before. So I had a, a, an article ready to go. She is facing, she is, has been officially charged. She's facing mm -hmm. two counts of making false reports, one to the um, dispatcher and the other to the officer who showed up, uh, which faces a maximum of only six months in jail per charge. So she is facing about a year uh, in prison. She's a white woman, although it is California, so who knows? Mm. But um, there is, I don't, I just don't think that that's, um, I don't think that that's that's a. I mean, that's a slap on the wrist comparatively. She probably won't see the inside of a, a jail cell. There'll probably be some uh, uh, soft on crime DA who you know. They'll gives probably her slap ask her if she wants to participate in the foster mother program in California. Uh, no, Skep, because she's yeah, white. Yeah. She she might be a woman, oh, but she's still right. white. So. Yeah, we can't have her appropriating uh, people's culture. Yeah, good point. This yeah. kind of shit just aggravates I didn't me. How insensitive of me. And I couldn't find any evidence of there being a father involved. Well, there was at one point, maybe briefly for yeah. like three minutes yeah. or so, but that's a, yeah, you know, two minutes we know there was one seconds, there at some point. Counting, right? like, yeah, he exactly. left her a 20 on the, on the bureau. And left. All right. Well, so I'm not sure if this is more or less outrageous. Uh, panel, California, a free state owes black residents $1.2 million each in reparations. I identify as a black <laughs> California resident now. Yeah, me now. too. Oh, I'm so black. The Actually, committee, no, Steph, I've been identifying that for 12 years now. So, all right. The committee signed into law. I said the committee signed into law by Governor Gavin Newsom, Democrat, during the height of the Black Lives Matter panic in 2020, released an interim report last year backing reparations and proposing separate black schools, among other proposals. So it yeah, narrowly maybe. decided that only those black residents who could trace their roots to Southern slaves should be eligible for reparations. It has determined that all black residents continue to suffer. Economists advising California's task force on reparations have, at long last, released an estimate of the damages caused by the state's history of slavery and its many vestiges of white supremacy, up to 1.2 million per black resident over a lifetime. Uh, I think this is pretty amazing stuff. The estimate reportedly includes the damage caused not only by slavery, such as it was also mass incarceration, housing discrimination, and health risks that are said to be worse among black residents. It is unclear how California would afford to pay the compensation described. One estimate of the cost is $800 billion, several times the size of the annual state budget, the chair of the task force. That's walking around money. The chair of the task force has backed a wealth tax 
as as a way to raise money essentially uh there's some rich white people over there let's just take their money and give it to people who will do uh better with it and uh i know you're thinking apparently are inferior to them that this is terrible and they'll never come with the money well they've got an answer for that too and and it is as follows California should aim to hand out reparations down payments to its black residents as soon as possible, Governor Gavin Newsom, Democrats' state task force, has now recommended. I mean, don't worry about those details of how you're going to pay us for the $800 billion with a B dollars. Just send us what you got right now, and we'll, we'll check back with you later and, and see if we can shake your lunch money out while we hold you yeah, upside down. down. You know, if, if, you, if you took Allison's money, Sergey, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and uh, some of the other billionaires up there, mm-hmm. you, could pro- you could probably shake loose close to eight hundred billion. I'll bet you could Maybe. get eight hundred billion out of uh, 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 California. Just take their money because that's legitimate, right? So you can give it to these people. Yes, Kiever Dam. Homeless, penniless white people hey. should pay reparations because oh. yeah. they weren't part of the solution. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. They it doesn't had matter. The advantages of the colonialists who came in and took the the land from the native people. Every Californian who did not pick up arms and reverse migrate the other way back to the eastern United States to free slaves is just as guilty as the slave yes. owners themselves. And if you deny that you're a racist, that's even more racist. That's doubly racist. That's you double were- racist. Do you gentlemen remember uh, the year 2015, the glorious year 2015, when organizations like BLM and notions of this were laughed at by the mainstream media? Because Pepperidge Farm remembers. Well, functional. <laughs> and then the see, Orange Man bad came and... I was a SharePoint it. administrator. I have amnesia that year. Yeah, <laughs> but functional... It's yeah. it, they have a perfect justification why for these you just give the money now. Well, don't worry about sorting out yes. the details. Just give us money now. Yeah. Just give it to us now. And the reason is given the process of calculating the amount of some of the losses and determining the methods and structure for issuing payments could involve a lengthy process. The task force further recommends that the legislature make a down payment with an immediate disbursement of a meaningful amount of funds to each member of the eligible class. One document penned by the panel reportedly recommended. Um, they've got uh, estimates for what they'd be uh, handing out. So uh, for each type of historic inequity, we're also suggested with the panel giving the figure of $2,352 per person per year for residents uh, for over-policing, $3,366 per person per year for discriminatory lending and zoning, $13,619 per year, uh, for dis- discrimination regarding health and seventy-seven thousand dollars per black-owned business loss uh, for black-owned business losses 000. and devaluations. Yeah, seventy-seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. And that figure was not seventy-six thousand dollars or seventy-eight thousand dollars. Why? Do you remember my bold proposal that I came up with that we just pay them in reparation bucks and then anybody who yes, yes, felt that I, they should be paid should just honor those. Absolutely, absolutely. It's yeah, like school it's script. Idea. Yeah, exactly. If you, want to if hire, you if not. you want to be virtuous and you think this is a good idea, we just pay them in reparation bucks. Yep. Put a big picture of Gazi Koto right on the front where the presidents would normally be, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and like a court on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know <laughs> if you go just, back far enough, everybody owes everybody something. It's like you just yes. you just can't. You know, there are still Moors that are angry for the Spanish for kicking them out of Spain, uh, forgetting that it was 200 years before that that the there Moors are, invaded and kicked the Spanish out. There are Urians who are still fucking pissed at the Sumerians. Yeah, exactly. There. They've got a cause. But anyway. Anyway, yeah. I'm being I'm being whiny. I'm sorry. But um, this is not just in case. Sorry, Functional, you were talking. I apologize. What were you saying? I was making flippant comments, but I did want to say that in all honesty, if, if, if you want to uh, 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 propagate these ideas, I think uh, we just deport you. We, okay. we do a 23 and me. Oh, you're 64% Kenyan? Bye. You're yeah. no longer an American citizen. Bye. 
Yeah, if you want to completely destroy the economy of Africa more than we already have, let's just send a bunch of rich Americans back with buckets full of cash to, to Africa. These aren't rich Americans. It would be it I would mean, be the Patrice Collars is, but it I mean, would be the most not. racist thing we could possibly do to just dump a bunch of cash into in, into Africa. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, for those of you who think that this is a California thing, Kansas City becomes latest Dem-run city to form reparations commissions yeah. seek payments for black residents. Uh, yeah, so that's something you can look forward to. So it it's not just California. I told you this all, stuff is just going to spread. All kidding, all kidding aside, I actually think because this is not doable, reparations mm. are not doable legally. They just aren't. They're not. You cannot do them. Is Newsom knows this too. He knows as soon as they pass that tax, that tax is going to get challenged, and it will be ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this this is them trying to take a little bit of pressure off the 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 steam of the 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 anger of the black community, and this is a bone they're trying to throw them to uh, keep them quiet. I, th I really do think they're, this is them treating the black, the, what they consider to be the black community, uh, a particular way to manipulate them. This is manipulative on the part of New Oh, Zealand. absolutely. You're buying um, them. And one final one, which I will just mention, we don't even need to discuss it because it's ridiculous. Yes. Progressive Chicago activists push for $1 billion in reparations. <laughs> uh, this is um, a bunch yeah. of... Uh, Agitators yeah. from the University of Chicago essentially yeah, we, talking about, yeah, we should free school, free this, free that, free, free, everything's free. Okay, yeah. let's Who's talk about something. Stuff? Here's a palate cleanser. Okay, giant, giant penis mowed into lawn at King Charles Coronation uh, Bash site. Had you heard about this? No, but no. I'm, I'm, there I'm, it is. <laughs> I'm so happy that. <laughs> Be so, happy. so somebody somebody <laughs> took it upon themselves to basically <laughs> is that real it is Wait, real Tanya. okay skep you know what's funnier than this is the fact there is a snopes page on is this real was giant penis drawn into lawn <laughs> where a king charles coronation party was <laughs> planned <laughs> true even snopes agrees that the giant oh penis is actually real Oh. <laughs> That's a great picture of Delicious. King Charles III I love there. You, Beth. Well done. <laughs> you ancient honorable town. Well done, Bath. Yeah. Uh there's some debate about whether this was mowed or somebody just used some sort of herbicide or salt or something, but uh I I think that's a pretty good drawing. From the air, it's very obvious what you're looking at. From the mm -hmm. ground, it's like, I don't know. This is a weird mm -hmm. game of hopscotch. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is supposed to come at the end of the show. I don't know what I was thinking. I, whoever it is, I salute you, sir. <laughs> no, what it's been, it's been, it's been mowed and rolled. That's Let's see. They, they mowed it short and they rolled it. Wonderful. Do we um, have enough? Have we I, killed enough time that we can skip the Navy drag queen thing? Did you want to skip the Navy drag queen thing? Here's the. Th I, I here's. I just want to say one brief thing about. And the United States Navy has, in its infinite wisdom, decided to uh, allow a, a, an E-5, a second-class yeoman, a yeoman mm -hmm. is an uh, office person who uh, tends to the needs of officers and is the officer's paperwork guy and, and gopher and guy Friday. Well, one of these people, uh, a yeoman, second-class, uh, which, which is the exact midpoint of uh, midshipman rank of midshipman of enlisted rank uh it has is non-binary he's a queen thing and the u.s navy has selected this man woman i don't know what it she he goes by uh to be to head up this recruitment drive that uh because they've got a shortfall of officers and i think that this disaster is going to make the Dylan Mulvaney disaster of Bud Light look like a success. This is going to absolutely be devastating. Let me tell you something. The kind of people you want in the Navy are not the kind of people who will respond positively to that kind of an appeal. I'm sorry. It's just not that way. The Navy is a hard job. 
putting ships at sea and doing all the support things in a timely way to do that again and again, and to be a part of that process is challenging. And there's really not any room for bullshit. That's the yeah. truth. And, and this is mostly bullshit and it will attract, I believe people who with the wrong at, aptitude and very likely poor choices in terms of uh, potential with regard to skill and MO, MOS, that uh, it, 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 it's going to be a, a, a disaster. They, if, if they get anything that is attracted by this, uh, it won't. Yeah, look at, I'm not going to go any farther than that because I'm, I could say a whole bunch of things about you. I want a piece of this and, and And how, you, how to uh, destroy mission readiness but uh, uh they're gonna get the wrong kind of people i'm, I'm just gonna say really quickly that i just think i don't think it's gonna have any effect one way or the other other than to just make them look ridiculous honestly i think uh, it's gonna i i oh i, I think, think recruitment traffic will be down harry yeah i bet I and because you'll hear nothing about they'll it, you you'll never hear it was a great success you won't hear about anything about it now it will be a, a vast failure but the recruiting shortfall will be even more less next year let me get a piece of this real quick because um no, remember we, we we saw the the military uh, sorry the army ad and that was closely juxtaposed with the russian recruitment ad where you know the russian ad for those that don't remember super serious russian guy jumps out of a plane he's like you're gonna defend your country Rah, russia that was the ad and the american army recruiting ad i have two moms and <laughs> We see the reverberations now. The military recruitment is 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 in a bad spot. They're being very hush hush on it. But looking at the numbers, you guys, in, in or you guys, but the, the the American Army, the recruitment is suffering greatly. Of the people who actually do sign up, even with the lowered standards. They are not getting enough people to 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 maintain the level that you're at. Never mind, continue to grow. So this is bad. This is going to be very. I feel it's going to be just as bad for the Navy, and we probably won't hear much about it uh, because they're going to keep it hush hush. But it's probably going to be just as bad for the Navy as it has been for the Army with their um, social justice ad. Yeah, well, I mean, the stage name of Harpy Daniels, that's uh, that's a thing. As digital ambassador, yeah, Yeoman Second Class, digital ambassador. Uh, there's our happy Yeoman. And there's our, there he is doing his uh, job, digital ambassador. Okay, anyway, moving on. Uh Ukraine says it downed a hypersonic Russian missile with the Patriot system. I'm still trying to process how this would be possible because the missile that they're probably claiming to have knocked down, if it's the hypersonic missile that uh, Russia has been using recently, is capable of Mach 10. Depending on what type of interceptors were in the Patriot system, they're good for Mach 4.5. Excuse me, Harry. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, I'm. I'm, I'm sorry, my um, my screen has frozen. <laughs> All I can do is move. My, I mean, my cursor. My my. Uh, I've got a, some sort of a process hang. Uh, and, and I thought I was. I thought I was out of the show. I thought. I thought it was. No, you're you're here, here but you can't see anything I'm showing. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there he goes. He's gonna be who could have who could have seen that coming? <laughs> right. <laughs> but yes, it's like if you can get out in front of this thing and it doesn't have any ability to evade, I suppose you can use a four point five Mach uh, interceptor to stop a uh, ten, um, a Mach easy. ten hypersonic missile. But uh, it sure isn't easy. I wouldn't say that the Patriot missile is intended for that or designed for that or well suited to that, but. Uh, it's not like the Ukrainians don't uh, boast about things sometimes. Yeah, well, misrepresent their accomplishments because war they propaganda. Are war after I all. mean, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, I'm not disparaging them. In war, 
everybody uses pop propaganda. It's one of the most effective tools in fighting a war. I don't blame them for that. I do blame them for the fact that they're just outright lying. Welcome back. Yeah. Hit it on the head and that. get super lucky. Yeah, basically. I mean, yeah, I suppose it's, like it's possible. But if I had hypersonic missiles raining down on me and I had a Patriot battery, I would no. not feel particularly safe. Well, wait. A Patriot system is not... Is, is Patriot missile system can handle a missile that goes about one third as fast as hypersonic missile does. That's just it. That yeah. it, it, they they can adapt it somewhat, but there is no way that a Patriot is going to be effective against hypersonic missiles. They just go too yep. fast. They're the electronics, the, the 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 things you need to do to uh, uh, nail a hypersonic missile. It, the speed just changes everything. Unless you make sure to don't... pretend it's a Sergeant uh, York and just fire every Patriot missile you have simultaneously. I so that it might scream. Yeah, yeah. And I still don't even Wall believe that Russia has uh, uh, workable hypersonic missiles. I, it looks uh, like why they do you do. not believe that? What is it that makes you not their track that? record of development? Okay. The, the, but, like, no, do you have any current information that says no, no? Okay. But but the the the, the claim just skepticism. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just well, general yeah, skepticism. Which I share. The claim, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we're of the same mind of that. Oh, but yeah. I mean, the claim. You know, great claims require great evidence. I've seen no evidence that they have working missiles, hypersonic missiles. I've seen reports that they've been testing them or trying to develop them. I haven't seen the evidence of it. You know, so you know, it, it's kind of a. Like I was saying when you were gone, uh, Skep, propaganda is is your greatest tool in war. Um, both sides are using the propaganda machine. Until mm -hmm. I see something with my own eyes, I really just, I couldn't personally care. Because, you know, show me something that's going on. Like I saw the, the video of the supposed drone getting shot down. And I'm like, motherfucker, please. You, you're telling me it gets like four feet away from the Kremlin before it gets shot down? I, I don't yeah. think so. They shot, it, down a, uh, they shot down a they shot down a U2 spy a spy plane a long time ago cuz frequently there's you can't shoot this down it's impossible well you know every now and then uh things happen right well, but, but that doesn't mean really, practically speaking that even if they did get one that this is a suitable that this is fit for purpose uh so the U2 is a slow relatively large object relatively slow relatively large a drone is a very small target. A hypersonic missile is a very fast target. So, I mean, uh, when we're talking something, just to shift it over, let's say the Iron Dome over in Israel. The reason why it's so effective is because the, the things they're shooting down are, are very slow, easily targetable yeah. archaic technology. It's not like that kind of a system, the Patriot system, it's not going to work for things like tiny little drones or hypersonic missiles. There's, there's, you know, it's, it's the, well, you, it just, mm. you, you have little advances in, in yeah. missile so, systems and defense systems and so forth. You know, for, for example, uh, Gary Powers was uh, shot down by a surface air missile that uh, they didn't think uh, had the capability of, uh, shooting him down at the altitudes uh he was at he thought he was safe and yeah. that was the thing where you know they they a jump in technology uh surprised us there same thing happened in uh cuba when we lost that uh, u2 that was shot down uh uh there we did we didn't know they had uh those kinds of uh surface to air mm -hmm. uh missiles down there i mean you know and, and these these things uh uh do happen yeah don't don't sell the U2 short functional. I've actually been in a room with a U2 that was disassembled. The engine was pulled and being worked on. It is an impressive piece of machinery, even though it's it, it's no Blackbird, but it's uh it is still an impressive piece of machinery. Machine. They um they actually have one at uh, NASA Ames that's been redubbed as the ER2. So it's an experimental research plane, and its purpose yeah. is to go gather data at high altitude. And, and really when that, that when that thing takes off in in Silicon Valley, the whole freaking valley shakes. It is an incredible piece of machinery. That thing takes off at about a forty five degree angle, and it hauls ass to get up to where it needs to operate. 
Yeah. It is an it's actually even though it's I mean I've never seen a blackbird. I'd love I'd love to see I've seen one a flying. Blackbird take take off and That's that's amazing, out. but this was enough for 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 little uh you know 14 what year old Harry at the time. Do you know what it was flying next to? No. The XB70 Valkyrie. Mm. Flying a hundred feet over Falcon Stadium at the Air Force Academy in nineteen sixty five. And that was uh that was actually the one that uh uh was uh it was in the accident like six months after uh, Yeah. Well you you know how the uh the warthog is like a machine gun with wings strapped onto it? Uh <laughs> <sort> of, yes. <laughs> the, the U two or ER two is basically a jet engine with uh, some wings, some stuff with some wings strapped onto it. It is that that plane is like all engine practically. What is what is? The U two. U two. Oh, oh yeah. The U. Yeah. The U two is an F one hundred four with long wing. I don't know if you were being facetious. Like I'm not trying to disparage the U two. No, no. I think I'm just saying in comparison to you know tiny little drone versus uh, a hypersonic missile. Like I mean, it's it's re- in relation to those types of things or even uh, it, their predecessors. No, abs- it's absolutely. relatively slow, relatively large, tar- hot target. Um, it's easy to see, easy to hit. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Compared to as long as as long as your missiles go up to 100, 110,000 feet. Well, yeah. let's talk about submarines while we're being skeptical of uh, yeah. Russian claims. So apparently, yeah. uh, one of the things we're supposed to be afraid of, because you know we have to be afraid constantly, are uh, Russian submarines in the North Atlantic, uh, uh, and and near the near the U.S. So I guess the Russians have been. Uh, being rather energetic with their schedule of uh, submarines running around in the Atlantic lately. Uh, enough so that that politicians from the UK and the US are starting to make noise about it. I don't know if this is a nothing burger or not. I kind of suspect it is. Um, if, but If we this... know about it, it's probably the Russians allowing us to know about it. They're, they delight in sending their their subs and they've got some subs that actually dive substantially deeper than our subs can they they hold the depth record and there's a reason for that Mm -hmm. uh and uh they absolutely delight in running all over the world they spend a lot of money doing this too running those uh uh, fast attack subs all over the world you know as though they were really going to attack something now the, the ones that are super expensive to run the but you know they're their ballistic submarines are a different story. They, those things uh, tend to uh, have regular sweeps and patrols, which we know the general areas where where those operate. Uh, but if they're run, they're if they're running a bunch of attack submarines around, uh, it all they're doing is reminding us that they have them. That's all. We're I here. Is, it's not just us. attack. It's not just attack submarines. It's also. Uh, ballistic missile submarines and one of the the new big ones that i guess fires these school bus size 100 megaton yeah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> typhoon, nuclear right? tsunami bs typhoon things so i did a little bit of uh digging Those into this and things found uh found this thing here russia close to persistent nuclear cruise missile attacks sub presence off u.s coast meaning they've got enough of these things around here all that at any given moment there's at least one of these things uh sitting off there with enough you know firepower to wipe out the eastern seaboard or more um you know which is an unsettling thought certainly um who what what difference does it make if you know in the big scheme of things yeah if not a ton if if they do a general strike on us they know what's going to happen and there's not a goddamn thing they can do about it we will absolutely turn them into radioactive glass and and they can they can try and do the same to us uh they tend to go after our military targets uh uh we tend to go after their civilian population centers that's good not luck very sporting the, of us yeah um good, good luck after the war so i was looking at the uh power of the russian submarine force and so they've got 11 ballistic missile submarines 17 nuclear powered attack submarines uh Nuclear powered cruise missile submarines nine, diesel electric attack submarines twenty one, and air independent propulsion enabled zero. I don't even know what the hell that is. And then I compare that to the U.S. forces. We've got a bunch of old Los Angeles class fast attack subs, uh, eighteen in commission Ohio class ballistic missile subs. 
yep. uh, a three sea wolves, which basically was canceled before they finished the project, and 19 um, commissioned Virginia class fast attack submarines. I mean, they've got submarines, we've got submarines. I think our odds are pretty good. I'm going to sleep fine. Yeah, no, you're, you're, they've you're got fine. a nuclear triad, we've got a nuclear triad. It's fine. How do yeah, you it's fine. It only only it, one yeah, of us. We've got we've got nukes. They've got nukes, but ours work. Well, the other thing is underneath. One of us can see the other one, and one of us can remain unseen from the other one. That's a huge yeah. advantage. Well, they've got uh, the newer subs. They've got supposedly uh, are nuclear powered and have a uh, stealth mode that's pretty good. I mean, in terms uh, of submarine. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but in but, terms of submarine detection, this is actually one of the things I read a book on just for giggles when I was very mm -hmm. young. Um, you have a big tube made of metal. It has magnetic properties, so that's yep. an avenue to trying to detect it, but you need to be kind of on the close side. The main thing is uh, anything that leaves a wake causes a, a disturbance behind it. Mm -hmm. That change in density as you have you know, any kind of propulsion system the more, the messier it is, the more easy it is to find that plume coming up behind the uh, submarine. There are ways to detect a submarine, but if you're deep and the screw is really clean or whatever propulsion system you have produces a very, very clean flow of water. And you have a titanium hull, hull, so it's not... That's not, not magnetic. magnetic. You know, you can make a submarine that's really not easy to spot if it stays low. The titanium hull has a lower crush depth than ours do. Did you know that? I mean, deeper. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Lower, closer to the center of the earth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> lower because I thought that would be fewer feet below the uh but anyway, Sorry, you know I, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, titanium is awesome. They they have an annoying amount of uh rare earth metals in uh, their soil bastards. Yes, they do. Yeah. That's why we need to nuke them so we yeah. can preserve our precious bodily fluids. Why is our why is their titanium under why is our titanium under their soil? Okay. Uh, let's see. Where are we for time? Uh, let's see. One hour and 13 minutes. Where are we supposed to be? Are we supposed to be talking about this stupid thing? Uh, Russian submarines. Uh, actually, we're doing okay for time. We're right about where we should be. Um, DeSantis signs bill allowing Florida board to cancel Disney deals. Now, for anybody who wasn't here earlier, essentially, the outgoing board ceded their authority to... Uh, Disney and their factotums and said, here, just do whatever the hell you want for the next hundred years. They tied it to some Byzantine legal principle in England about some monarch dying at a certain time. That doesn't really matter. The point being, uh, it looks like the Florida legislature just said, no, -uh, and uh, we can just undo that. Um, I don't know about the legality of this. I mean, this seems like the sort of thing that one could certainly challenge in court because the people who granted those permits had the authority to do it at the time. And again, I'm not a lawyer, but I, no. I don't think this works. Yeah. Something like this is going to be solved by the guys who, you know, count. This is going to be a very detailed case and it's going to be sorted according to details. It, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, outcomes of, of cases like this and in, in the business community at least uh things that i've seen are surprising and uh you know i think i think it's hard to predict what what the, it sounds illegitimate to me that you can have something like this be decided by the placement of a single comma it can come down yes. to the yes, skill exactly. of the skill of the lawyers involved yes. in, in every aspect of this. Yeah. Yep. Um, which doesn't mean you can and you cannot predict who the winners or losers are going to be. Sometimes it's just who who made a mistake first and who has the better lawyers. You know, being on the right side of it doesn't really matter all that much. I, I don't know this whole thing. It's like I get it. DeSantis got kind of pissed off by this thing, but. Would it really have been that big a deal for him just to have ignored these people? I mean, is this really a fight that he needs to, to have? Behind this. That's kind of a really great it. question. That's a really important question. Why is DeSantis doing this? There's some political calculus that he thinks this, uh, I, this, this makes his base like him? Nothing, nothing makes sense to me. Fuck he's... 
no, no, don't be sorry. He's the anti-woke governor. He made that huge speech. You know, woke is where Florida comes to die. Or yeah. Uh, 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 so in in Disney being seen as sort of like the pinnacle of woke in arts and entertainment right now, I think th this is just pure speculation on my part. I think that that's why he's pushing back on it. On a personal level, I don't like Disney having its own fiefdom. But who the fuck am I? I'm not even uh, a resident of the United States. I'm not a resident of Florida. Ultimately, I don't care. You know, Can but that's where I kind of envision why he's doing this kind of thing. Well, functionally, if you if you're in the United States and you look at something like, say, a church, right? The power to tax is the power to destroy. So we don't tax churches. However, yeah. churches don't exist in isolation. Right. So if you have a church or a religious college or something, it's surrounded by things like power lines and streets and sewers and things like that. So there's almost always some sort of accommodation that gets reached between powerful, more or less autonomous thing and the municipalities around it. Same mm -hmm. thing goes for Native American reservations and things like that. There's no such thing as but, something that's completely sovereign and completely immune no. because they always interact with the stuff around them which means there's always going to be some sort of give and take. And at a certain point, it's just sort of expedient not to be a giant dick, right? So him being a dick and them being dicks and everybody just, it's just, I don't know. It's like, it's dick a off. huge business and it's a huge employer in his state. And there was probably a classier way to do this for him to express his uh, thing, his, his displeasure with this mm -hmm. without essentially making him <laughs> look like the kind of guy that, doesn't care about the spirit of the law when he wants to get his way. Yeah. It looks yeah. really he did, he did, he peevish. He he's vir virtue signaling to his base. Yeah. I don't know. Or he hasn't thought it through. Maybe he's just not that bright. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. That's, I don't know. That, that actually occurred to me too, Harry. I, it, it dawned on me that there have been a couple of times when I listened to DeSantis and I just go, that's, that's stupidity. That's, this guy is a, just a bit thick. You know, he's, 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 well-intentioned and and you know has his head on straight in in a number of ways but it in places he's just de rigueur unthinking conservative he's he's yeah. not a thoughtful conservative man yeah my that's why i don't like him as a presidential candidate oh I and his past um there's no way this guy's I, any good I, I think in your example harry the fact that uh just purely political that would be suicide to go after to treat you know, churches and, and, and shuls and mosques and whatever other re religious institutions like that, that are uh, sort of in a, for failure of a better word, you know, kind of parasitic on the, on the system without having to pay into the system. Um, whereas this is a private corporation. We can make other arguments for, for the church or whatever, but I, I, I think it's pure politics. If he goes after this, he's going to garner, the the eyeballs of his base <laughs> see the dog agrees yeah the, right. he's gonna get the base he's gonna get some more people who you know closer to the middle who are like yeah disney's woke fuck them with unthinkingly you know not very forward thinking people um so he's gonna get some political support there i think that if the same if the same kind of thing from a governor left right whatever doesn't matter were to do that same sort of position uh, 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 posturing towards any sort of religious institution, I think you'd get pushback from all sides, except for the, you know, obviously the far, far left who are just crazy. But uh, I think that that would just be political suicide. So this is, this seems like pure, pure politicking. It, 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 I don't know. You know, he's, he's a former lawyer. So there's got to be something there that he's thinking that we're not thinking. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's just the whole time machine reach back thing. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I know, yeah. I know enough about the law to be dangerous, and I'm not so sure this works. You can pass anything you want; it just may not pass muster. But okay, enough of this. Moving on. What is next? Oh well, yeah, so but, but. we talked about uh, Tucker Carlson oh, yeah. and Fox trying to basically do him in, and then so this came floating across my desk, and I'm like. I don't quite understand this. Fox asked Dominion Voting to probe leaks of Tucker Carlson messages. It's as if Fox wants to say, nah, -uh, we wouldn't torpedo our guy Tucker. So I think about this and it's like, okay, either they legitimately didn't do it, which I 
don't necessarily believe. I believe Megan Kelly has a pretty good uh, grasp on the situation that they're vindictive and they want to separate Tucker from his audience. Mm-hmm. But it's possible. I mean, there's a number of things that possible, like for, are possible. For instance, they may be finding that separating Tucker from his audience is uh, difficult, and they're trying to do some sort of damage control. They're trying to create plausible deniability that they're the ones that have been leaking the stuff about Tucker. Um, mm-hmm. So either they're innocent and protesting, which seems weird, or this is just trying to build a case for plausible deniability so maybe all of Fox's viewers won't hate them and leave. I'm not really sure what's going on here. I I wish I had an answer for you, but I find this story to be, the fact that it exists, to be kind of curious. We still have Skep? Oh, he's muted. Okay. He's probably uh, dealing with Dog. Yeah, I mean, I'm not very familiar here, but uh, this isn't really my wheelhouse when it comes to, you know. Uh, but uh, it, it does seem more to me like they're they're using it more as a like uh, optics cudgel as opposed to anything of substance. Yeah. Because, um, uh, you know, it's just what I see in passing on YouTube and, and the news and whatever, like that's, there, there's no there there with, with everything that they've released so far, like him saying, calling the, 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 uh, the producer or whatever lady at Fox, uh, a Irina like, I mean, Briganti. Yeah. I like, I mean, was, yeah. so what he called her a cunt big fucking deal, but people are going, Oh my God, it's the end of the world. He's such a racist. He called her a cunt. Wait, what? How, how is cunt racist? But I, I, <laughs> it's it's you know it's but it's the optics. It's going to the people who aren't going to look past the headlines, who are already anti Tucker, are going to be like, yeah, get him, get him, get him. And everybody else is going to kind of like the normies are going to kind of shrug their shoulders. Some of them might be persuaded, most won't. And obviously the opposition, they're going to get their their facts straight from uh, their sources and go, okay, yeah, this doesn't it doesn't look good for Fox. But again. People didn't don't like most people don't like Fox. People love Tucker. <clears throat> Excuse me. People love Tucker. People of various uh, positions on the spectrum, the political spectrum, love Tucker because yeah. he is that kind of straight shooting. You know, adds a little bit of, uh, of brevity to his, his his covering of some stuff, and it's good. He he's a good presenter. Um, I don't think that this is ultimately going to do anything to him. We'll see. I mean, we see how things of uh, bullshit uh, uh, lawsuits are going through with other things, most notably a po- certain political candidate for president. Um, so the, the, there is going to be optical damage. The extent of it, who's to say? Well, I wasn't planning on playing this particular thing, but I think I thought it was interesting. I, I, I know I shared this with you in uh, in Discord functional, but let me just bring this up for everybody. This could be a put on. I didn't know you could fish here. You can. You can. Yeah. Oh yeah. What are you fishing for? Are you videotaping me? Yeah. Why? Because you're in public. I can. Well, I know you can. I, okay. I'm not challenging your right. I just okay. want to know why you. I would. find it interesting that you're fishing in Central Park. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. See, it sounds like it's confrontational. Uh, I'm but a then... fly fish, so I use flies. I'll show you. Oh, those are the things you make. Uh, you... Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the string. I'm stupid. I don't. I don't fly fish. It's all right. Most people don't. Oh, okay. See, and you tie them. You tie your own flies? I do, yeah. You do? Good man. Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in California. Yeah, you did a lot of fly fishing out there? Not really. No? no. But I learned in later life, and it's a great pleasure and a great sport. It's like relaxing, it's right? Very. Uh, and, you know... You live in New York now? No. Well, I do live here part-time, actually. Okay. What do you do with the video? I put it up on my channel. I have a lot of people that follow me. Do you really? Yeah. That's great. I have about, kind of... about 15,000 people that follow me. Really? Uh, that's so neat. He's yeah. Such a, he's such I mean, a, that uh, seems pretty good him. to me, honestly. Um, I mean, he I did, know it could just be a put on. He did, he did come across the the, the 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 guy behind the camera did come across a little confrontational at first, and yeah, <laughs> watching the video. But in in doing the research about the guy, he's what like autistic or something. Like he, <laughs> that, that's just his that's just his demeanor. He's not actually very confrontational. And yeah, I mean, he, he's I probably, probably on the spectrum a little bit, but yeah, he seems probably, like a decent enough guy. I would probably, you know, if I saw Tucker Carlson, you know, hanging out in the park across from my building, I'd go over to me. I wouldn't videotape the man because I'm not of that mindset. The guy's totally on the spectrum, by the way. But I would go up. I'd be like, hey, you know, uh, 
I, I'd want to talk to the man because Tucker seems to be an interesting dude. Like, yeah, like fly fishing. Wow, I've never seen fly fishing before. What, what's all this about? It's like walking. I would up to do Jay that Leno if it was and... Harry. I would do that if it was some stranger. I would do yeah. that if it was Tucker. Like if I saw something interesting, I talk to people. That's well, it know, would be like walking to up to Jay Leno and saying how much you like your, uh, you know, your, um, your Subaru or your or something else. You know, just some sort of modest car and be like, "That's great." You know, and it's like he genuinely is happy that you're happy with your car, mm. even though he has hundreds of cars, including classic Bugattis. Going, you know, I mean, just ridiculous thing. Yeah. So Tucker could have been a complete dick. He could have about the guy having 15,000 followers, but no, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's, no, it's because that is, my a, own that flies. is a good thing. Yeah. I like yeah. the fact that he looked like he almost felt like he needed to apologize for being from California. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you know what you can fish for in uh, Central Park? Muskies. No, I'm just kidding. Not muskies. Largemouth, Condoms? bass, pumpkin seed, sunfish. Bluegill sunfish. sunfish, carp, and there's a couple of kinds of pickerel for that. Man. <laughs> Harry's going to go to Central Park with it it all everything but now and just like <laughs> shoot into the water. Die, fish. Die, fish, die. Um, let me see. Pumpkin, so, pumpkin, seed, pumpkin seed sunfish, though. That, that was my favorite. Pumpkin seed sunfish. So, so speaking like of, the, a picture of, a sun, of the Bud Light thing, right? <laughs> The people talk about there was an ad back in 1993, which was Bud Light Na Ladies Night, and this is this is what it was. And well, we need to probably talk to make sure we don't run into copyright problems. If you want great taste, yeah. So. <laughs> People are trying to make trying to make something out of this, and yeah, okay. So these guys were in drag, so they because they love Bud Light so much, they wanted to cash in on Ladies' yeah. Night at a bar. Remember when this, this has, was a joke? This has nothing whatsoever to do with Dylan with Mulvaney friends. and your rainbow butt plugs and all the other crap that you're trying to. No, it has nothing to do with any of that. It's well, just I mean, rainbow butt plugs are not a thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want those to be a thing. I don't want that. I don't want that world. Yeah. I'm going to remain blissfully ignorant. I'm more yeah, concerned don't, about don't what that video at the bottom is. The yeah, yeah. So they, I mean, they've got, uh, let's see. If you Google rainbow butt plugs, you go don't Google any of that. A 30 year old <laughs> Bud Light commercial featuring four men in drag ordering the beverage at a beer at a bar has resurfaced on social media amid the ongoing furor over the brand's recent partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. For several weeks, the beer brand has been the focus of deeply divided debate after sending transgender blah, 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 blah. That's uh, not deeply divided. <laughs> It's just like nobody cares. Honestly, yeah. nobody cares. This is just so stupid. The and nobody cares beyond on. how many clicks they can get for acting uh, like a fool on either side of the spectrum. Like anyway. this is so dumb. Perhaps so dumb. in part because of the absence of social media, the reaction was decidedly different in 1993 when a Bud Light commercial was released that showed four men in drag going to a bar and ordering the beer. Four men. No difference. It was about There's four, no difference. Yeah, there's no difference. It's totally the same. It is totally the same, and, and those it's men only because sincerely identified as women. But well, also they didn't have social media like Twitter, and that's the problem. Because if Twitter had been there, then the right people could have told them how wrong their behavior was, and they could have shut this stuff and down. Assassin makes a good point. This is not men in drag; they're in comedically bad disguise. Yeah, that's what that's what it is. It's it's drag. They've 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 obfuscated the word, like, uh, and and not to disparage your how entire nation, you murder like like how Americans truth. tend to do with mm -hmm. with English language, mm -hmm. and and they've obfuscated the term drag specifically. It's specifically a a a, a style of theater which involves cross dressing. What we're talking about here is cross dressing. Somebody walking down the street, a man. In, in women's clothing, that's not drag, that is cross-dressing. They're very different. So what these 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 slacktivists have done with their transgender stuff is they've they've turned any and all things that have to do with cross-dressing or gender norms or whatever is now drag. 
And they're trying to drag it all under their LGBTQIAP2 yeah, umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because the more things that they can put in front of them, the greater the shields are. That's right. The more letters they have in their alphabet, the stronger their coalition. And there's people in their coalition that are like, wait a second, what? <laughs> Who invited these people? Yeah. All these gay men are just like, I just, you know, just, just wanted to have the same rights as everybody else, you know, to... Cause, you know, cause and, what's and her name? Dame Edna. Dame Edna. Uh, 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 Robin Williams in, in Mrs. Doubtfire. That's not drag. The TV Again, show it, Bosom it, Buddies. Because Donna yeah, Dixon was hot and they needed uh, a place Klinger. to stay. It happened. Klinger. That's not yeah. drag. He's not putting... There's no. no there's no theater aspect. It's I all... Forgotten about, I forgot about Jamie Farr as Klinger. Yeah. Klinger. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, they keep bringing. I mean, they keep bringing up things like this. This old ad, Klinger, Dame Edna, no. and whenever you bring that up to the people who, <laughs> who truly believe in the Alphabet Soup Club and and the the messages that they're pushing, they completely have that arrow for error four hundred four on their face when they go. Yeah. They're trying to process. Yeah. Uh, 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 and then they, you know, they 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 quickly as quick as they can shift topic. It happened the other night with uh, uh, Lance from the Surfs on Tim Pool, which glorious mm -hmm. fucking episode of Tim Pool. Um, so I mean, it's it, it's you're right. It's nothing. Nobody really cares. It's all just people getting more clicks for for dealing with this stuff on either side. It's. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. throw, throw in one other thing on on all this. You know, I remember when when I was in the Navy. Yeah, I remember nineteen. Uh, 76 the one of the ways to get out of the navy was to march into yep. the personnel office and say i'm gay as yep. soon as you said that they will write up a chit and you will be yeah be discharged you know without comment not, Sweet. neither yep. neither honorably or dishonorably it's it's kind of like a uh, hush, medical hush. sorry it didn't work out <laughs> see you yeah. later it's like and, an annulment. And, <laughs> and well, the thing was, it, and and occasionally you would see it. It was it was always some horrible dirtbag sailor. Nobody valuable ever did this, you know. And, it, it, and you were always glad to be rid of them, and you know, yeah. they'd be, and you'd see them down there hanging their heads in shame in the personnel office because they usually had to wait all day to get a ride off the ship to get process out processed, and they would be a civilian the next day. They mm -hmm. would be a civilian the next day. With, and I'm uh, sure the people their, around them, the other seamen, would would probably know. That's why he's hanging his head. Oh, they, they probably every, know what's... The yeah. captain of the ship knows. that. The yeah, ship yeah. Everybody knows. Everybody so that's why he's holding his head knows. in shame because he knows, like, I'm just doing this to get out. Well, know? he just doesn't want to make eye contact because he, he's, he's not going to get anything even remotely friendly from anybody. Who's, yeah, because on paper it's it's kind of like you know just let it go, let club. it happen. But everybody who is still giving their all to the service to the defense of their yeah, nation, it's an, it, has exactly. That pride. It's an organizational. It's an organizational yeah. thing. Exactly. They'll, they'll look at him in disgust. Like I mean, even me as a civilian, I would look at somebody like that in disgust. No, you just wanted yeah. to get out because you're a pussy, you're a coward, yep. and that was your easiest way out. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love the the chat is full of people examples of people dressing in drag for comedic effect yeah tootsie will ferrell as janet reno dana carter yeah. as church lady all of kids in the hall how about Thank monty you. python monty python what's that penguin doing on top of the television set standing <laughs> every sperm is sacred <laughs> How do you know it's male? Well, oh, it looks kind of butch. Since we're talking about Monty Python, um, uh, 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 what's oh, his here name? we go. What's his name? Um, what? Eric Eric Idle. His his wife recently passed. Uh, oh yeah, I heard about night. that. That was man. Yeah, that's the suck. Because those guys, that that troop of of people, men, <laughs> are spe. <laughs> I had an opportunity. Sorry. I had an opportunity to meet uh, Graham Chapman uh, at a thing that I was not supposed to be at. But I. But it was one you of those things him. where I said I had an opportunity to meet him, but I was not supposed to be there, and I didn't feel like sneaking in just so I could, you know, fanboy over Graham Chapman because that just felt dishonest and nasty uh, to take somebody else's spot yeah. to do that. And so I, I didn't. 
Uh, but I do know some people who were in attendance of that thing, and uh, yeah, he was uh, he was pretty amazing. <laughs> he was a pretty amazing dude, and uh, he didn't need to be there either. He was basically doing community service, helping out new actors, uh, trying to you know talk to them and get them started and stuff. Um, good dude. Anyway, uh, let's see. So another big retailer is pulling out of San Francisco. Uh, this time it's Nordstrom, which is pulling uh, out of Union, uh, Union uh, Square, Union which is Square. like the yeah. big high value shopping right. thing, you know, where people used to travel to San Francisco just to go shopping there. It was right. on par with other great right. cities around from, the world. Yeah. Where so you, you could Rio de Janeiro. That's yeah, you could go there and, you know, check out your FAO Schwartz and your, you know, weird, super expensive handmade game thing and you know all that sort of stuff yeah. you'd have you know your needless markup and nordstrom and all that sort of stuff so you know nordstrom's just said no the hell with this sort of stuff uh the dynamics of the downtown san francisco market have changed dramatically over the past several years impacting customer foot traffic to our stores and our ability to operate successfully um you mean that anybody who drives down there there's a uh, probably greater than 50 percent chance that somebody will break into their car looking for anything to steal um, and London Breed's response to this, the mayor of San Francisco was, well, we offered to keep two of our officers in their store at all times. Uh, two <laughs> officers inside your Nordstrom, <laughs> is, inside your Nordstrom. Is, is like a fart yeah. in a whirlwind. It's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's nothing. That'll stop. That'll, that'll, that'll keep the, uh, these professional thieves from coming in and just nuking a store like Nordstrom's. I mean, yes. they, would, they would have to have uh, everything locked down, and even then, you're still going to have armed robberies and stuff like that. That place, you know, that place, Lund Breed has turned that place into Chicago, just the the same way uh, uh, Beetlejuice turned uh, mm -hmm. uh, Chicago into Chicago. Yeah, you've seen some. You, I'm sure you've seen some of the videos, Skep. It's 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 like something out of a zombie movie. There's this tidal wave of human bodies. That will run into a store, grab everything in sight, and leave. Oh, yes, I've seen that. Yeah. What, what, you know, it doesn't matter if they have two or 20 security guards. There's no stopping a wave of people that large. Right. No, and they and, won't because it would, be, they won't. it would be bad press for them to do that. But the, uh, the philosophy is that it's never appropriate to shoot somebody over stealing a piece of property. Why would why would you commit that aggression to someone who simply as an example as a as a teachable moment for that person and everybody else who sees it? That's why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Not but, to mention um, there is there there more people have died from these these mass looting events just from being trampled from being crushed. You know, people taking part of it. So. It's not a perfect system yet. We're, try we're trying to make the looters <laughs> more organized. We're trying to get the merchandise okay, out okay. the door in a safe manner. You know, everybody's on the same team here. Yeah. Well, I mentioned Scott Weiner, <laughs> the mm. uh, the guy who. Uh, uh, what do I say about Scott Weiner? He's probably the second most powerful politician in California, and uh, he. He's kind of a weird dude in that he really likes doing things like breaking up families. He's really in favor of that. And uh, he's big on like bringing in out of state people to, you know, trans up their kids and that kind of thing. He's big on that. But he's weirdly in the pocket of developers. Like you wouldn't expect it, but he really likes pushing through bills that make it so that people can build properties and make money regardless of what the local communities want to do. He's big on, uh, pro developer stuff which makes no sense because he's super liberal but anyway california state sense? senator still getting kickbacks yeah scott weiner yeah. tweeted <laughs> that the closing was horrific and tragic but underscored the need to reimagine downtown san francisco and address public safety concerns current conditions are untenable for san francisco's future success weiner said mm. meaning that he would love to just have the people who i mean allegedly give him his kickbacks, go in there and redevelop that whole thing. Maybe they Allegedly. can just put up a big open air supervised drug uh, taking area uh, next to uh, huge blocks of uh, low income slash free alleged housing. Kickbacks. Alleged. Yeah, alleged kickbacks. Yeah. 
I don't know. San Francisco just makes me sad. But, you know, it's not just San Francisco. Uh, Oakland, California, which everybody knows that I hate Oakland, California more than I hate fish. Um, and I love Oakland. I love my old Oakland from 1975. So they have actually been continuing the eviction moratorium since the COVID thing started. It's still going. What's going to happen when that uh, moratorium comes to an end, Harry? Well, that is a, that is a good question, Skep. But uh, there were some people that wanted to push it out to September, but they're going to have mm. an end on July 15th. Mm. Okay. And you may yeah, rightly ask... You may rightly ask about this, but uh, Oakland's COVID-19 eviction moratorium first adopted in March 2020 as a pandemic upended daily life will come to an end this summer. The city council voted at midnight Tuesday after hours of passionate public comment to sunset the policy on July 15th. Um, now, I know this will come as a shock to you, but they've decided to put in a bunch of voters rights, I'm sorry, tenant right things. Uh, no. As they're sunsetting this, they're going to introduce a whole bunch of new stuff. Under the new policy, tenants who can prove they experience COVID-related hardship can never be evicted for unpaid rent that became due while the moratorium was in place. Landlords are also prohibited from evicting anyone who owes less than one month of what the federal government considers fair rent. Mm. I kid you not. So essentially they're saying if somebody just decided not to pay you during the moratorium that was three years people. long you yeah know, three this oh. is uh <clears throat> looking at the city of oakland's actual thing you know if you were unable to pay your rent between march 9th and july 14 2023 because of covid 19 pandemic you can never be evicted over that unpaid rent you still have to <laughs> start paying rent on july 23rd your property owner can still take you to court over any unpaid rent accrued between march 9th and july 14th if you live in a rent controlled dwelling, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I fucking hate Oakland so much. I just, I just can't stand this town. Amazing idiots. I wish Prospero was here right now because <clears throat> this to me is nothing short of a taking by the government without compensation. That's exactly they're, they're, right. they're going to yeah, somebody and saying, you shall provide this service. You're still going to pay property taxes. You're still going to pay income tax. You're still going to pay all this stuff. The figures that I've found, which I'm not entirely sure are reliable, but the closest thing we've got is that about 80% of the people in Oakland still paid their rent because they're not scum. 80% yep. of the people don't. But of that, but the remaining 20% just said, I don't have to pay my rent. Pff, I'm not going to pay my rent. Mm. About 20% of the people in Oakland who are renters just stopped paying their rent for three years. And what's happening wow. is of the people who are renting out properties, about 15% of them are on the precipice of bankruptcy because of this yeah here here's the thing about oakland oakland is a place where the property is owned a lot i you know a lot by people whose families have been there for generations and this yeah. property has been passed down through the family generation after generation and by you know those are the families with six vehicles parked out front and there's 25 people living inside and six of them have jobs. I mean, they they and they make a lot of money. The and the vehicles are nice. And mm -hmm. you, you you see that you, you see that uh, type of situation. Then you have the other guys, the guys who are making a business out of it. And these are the guys who are getting screwed. These are the, the guys who you know have a business plan. It's got a function between these parameters. But you know, I've got to be certain that I've got these income streams here, and then I can meet these expense streams here. Match yep. these up, have a little profit here, voila, the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when you say no, you, you don't get any more income. What the fuck? You know, how is that a fair game? You know, this is going to go to court. And oh, I have a feeling the city of Oakland is going to lose. The city of Oakland is going to lose on this because there's no way this isn't a violation of what the Fourth Amendment. Uh, the, yeah, this is yeah this. This is a see. This is a seizure of property. It's an illegal taking. This is yeah. complete. It's a complete an illegal taking, and just no, no, absolutely not. It's it seems illegitimate. I can't say it's illegal. I I, I don't want to be on on record. Yeah. It's, it's well, I mean, uh, but we're lay people, I, right? I, but we know I, what the sure, Fourth Amendment yeah, says. It, it sure. It sure. I can't. I cannot see a way 
to rationalize it with the Fourth Amendment, even uh, knowing some of the most liberal interpretations of the Fourth Amendment that are out there. There's no way it stretches to cover this. This is bullshit. It is bullshit. Anyway. How Anyhow, uh, let's see. What is next? But speaking of segues, here's one. See what I did there? Well, there was this thing that happened. The segue uh, for a segue. Rashida Talib uh, had put out some quote on Twitter, a tweet, a tweet on Twitter saying uh, that Israel, <laughs> Israel yeah. was an apartheid state, and uh, sure. the new fact checking kicked in and just said, uh, said uh, "Ah, bitch." Uh, yeah, she was saying it was. It's just fantastic. I I love this. Uh, yeah, Talib's I reported tweet that was tweet. In, by the way. Oh, you did? Good. The I'm fact sure, check sure first points did. out that Israel was created by the United Nations General Assembly. Resolution, yada, Those yada, yada. Yeah, that's the fact good. check then points out that ethnic cleansing Tlaib claimed happened affected both Jewish and Arab communities caught up in the war initiated by five Arab states who opposed the existence of Israel. To bolster the second point, the Twitter fact check linked to the State Department's official history of the Arab-Israeli War of 1948. The last note pointed out that Israel has over 20% Arab citizens who have full and equal rights, linking to a Democracy Institute study that found the country's Arab residents had declining yes. rates of infant mortality and rising life expectancy. And by the by way, any objective measure, not an apartheid state. Exactly. Yeah, and, suck and it. Those, those Arab citizens of Israel want nothing to do with the Palestinians. Nothing yep. to do. There are Arabs and there are Arabs, and the Israeli Arabs really look down on the Palestinian uh, Arabs, which is kind of unfortunate because it's not yeah. the Palestinian Arabs' fault that that they're in the state that they're in. It's their leadership, their corrupt leadership, and yep. the very difficult situation there. And the, the stranglehold that that leadership has on the regular yep. folk. Exact, Amundo. You you do <sighs> not talk, speak against the the the. Uh, Let's you know, keep using the word leadership because I've got some strong words for them. But um, you do not talk against that leadership, even in in, in private discussion, because they have you everywhere. You're talking about PLO and Hamas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. The hell? They change, they change demand, the name uh, every few years, but they're the same people. Activists yeah, demand PLA, higher payments PLO. for California Reparations Task Force, two hundred million per person. <laughs> 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 I, I can't. Okay, never mind. Okay, sorry. Um, and Katanji Brown is going to sit out a case that uh, people on her team really wish she wouldn't sit out. Uh, mm. But the reason she's sitting it out is is actually I think she's Very being principled. She was reason. on a she was on yeah she was basically she a was judge who the, heard the case previously right. at a lower level court. She's right. doing her job. It's like. Right. I know this you really is... wanted to put her thumb on the scale, but yeah, no. Uh, what case is this? Uh, the case is Chevron versus Natural Resources Defense Council. It's called the Chev oh, okay. Chevron case. Yeah. Okay. And it involves a New England fishing company, so I'm already on Chevron's side. Um, okay, yeah. so anyway, we can skip over that because it's not yeah, that interesting. Yeah, not too it's a fishing Let's talk about something. The fish is only for sunfish, Eric. So have you gentlemen heard about the Roddenberry archive? I know of it. You I... know of it? Okay. What do you know about it? Well, it's it's the 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 collection of the stuff for Star Trek. Yeah, well, 100 years after the birth of Star Trek's creator. Uh it's probably an anticipation of the century ahead. Well, what it is <laughs> What it is, is essentially it's a digital archive that's being made with the uh, cloud graphics envision people O-toy. Mm. Um, so the Roddenberry estate and this group of digital people and a bunch of nerds have been taking models and people and things and diagrams and sucking them into uh, extremely detailed 3D models of one-to-one -one 3D models of like things from the Star, oh the Star Trek God. universe. I figured, yeah. you know, it was May the 4th yesterday. Let's just not talk about that and talk about Star Trek instead, because I can. Oh, um, I know, yeah. So Giant this is a ruling. huge, huge, huge effort that they're they're going through. Um, they recently... They're working together on this, too. It, it is. They recently decided to uh, take the what? pilot episode uh, 
ship, the version what? of the Enterprise, they actually got an actress who looks like somebody from the thing, dressed her up in the outfit, and then stuck her in their giant 3D scanner space, and then sucked her into VR world. Um, the older gentleman you see in this picture, sorry, it's a little small, he's actually the director of that pilot episode. They brought him over to look at this thing. So, like, Michael Okuda's involved, uh, yeah. Shatner has shown up for this thing. It, this is this is really uh, pretty this awesome. Is amazing. Yeah, I like everything about this. So the Roddenberry Archive team has allowed the cast and crew of the Cage to step back in time, fifty years, revisit a one-to-one life-size virtual set, costumes, characters, and props, I including two this. working Enterprise interiors. The Cage, which yeah. predates Star Trek: The Original Series by two years, was written and produced by Gene Roddenberry and directed by Robert Butler. Um, it's just all fantastic. I wish I could zoom in on more of the stuff, but you can see the original actress and uh, the close. new person that they're scanning. They've they've duplicated as much of the stuff as they possibly can wow. to try to make it authentic. I have goosebumps over every inch of my body right this now. Is this, so, know, I'm just, this is I'm, so I, good. When, when I originally heard about this, I thought this was just going to be like a digital resource. Like they were just oh, taking no. all the old documents and it was going to be like some private uh, Oh no. Uh, no, 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 fucking, oh my God. They're I'm taking gonna... all of this stuff, all of it, and, and scanning and it in it so that it will be, DVD it will be space. around forever. This is, well, I mean, I they're expanding this. on the source material and turning it into actual, uh, uh, uh virtual 3D yeah. spaces, which is, wow. Yeah. The level of autism here, I mean, detail is exceptional. <laughs> I think you got it right. Yeah, so you can see, you know, they they put these models in this giant 3D scanner thing and just suck all of it in. So I I did highlight this. Planetary cameras. This one section here, the Roddenberry Archive Project is targeting emerging media formats, including augmented and mixed reality, as well as holographic displays. Models Mm. are both recreated inside Otoy's unbiased path tracing rendering tool set, Octane, and scanned using Otoy's light stage reflectance field scanning platform, providing in-universe and yeah. ground truth versions of artifacts in order to achieve the highest level of historical fidelity. Wow. All renderings, documents, scans, and data will be registered on the render network, providing a permanent archive to catalog and preserve Gene Roddenberry's universe of ideas and work. It's all being basically shoved into the blockchain. I love that. I yeah. love that, and I, and this, we the, if you lock things into the blockchain, you can you can make them unchangeable. You you can't make them unco- You know you can make them. It's not going to be Wikipedia, hard to yeah. discover, but uh, you you can't undo that part of the blockchain. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. No, I think this is pretty fantastic. I don't know as much about these tools as I probably should, but I'm not. A working professional uh, in mm. this type of stuff, but uh, it's fascinating stuff, though. I mean, real people are putting a lot of love and a lot of time and a lot of work and, and a lot I of resources in this. For it. Yeah, and they're covering yeah. all of the st- basically Star Trek and all of its official descendants. So I, anything that's like in the, the real Star Trek universe, all of the Kelvin universe crap can just go suck a bag of dicks. Well, there's no models for that, so there's nothing to scan. Yep. I mean, Actually, I kind of like have... Chris Pine as Kirk, but whatever. That's yeah, just but me. that's neither here nor there. That's, that's not enough to save that show. Actually, me? Carl Urban as uh, Bones was, Bones was pretty good, too. Good. But Carl Urban's a national treasure. I mean, yeah, to me, exactly. the first thing that kind of... was Carl Urban doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I mean, the, the actor's great, but I mean, the, yeah. Anyway, um, to me, like the first thing that kind of comes to mind is, oh my God, like I don't even have a VR setup. I could care less about the VR setup. Give me a, a GUI interface or a GUI, a graphic user interface um, mm-hmm. for the layman in the chat uh, 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 to even on my PC, just be able to walk around in these spaces. Like, hell yeah, I want to do that. And then the capitalist part of my brain goes, now let's turn that into a theme park. Five ninety nine. You can now tour the Enterprise A. I would, I would fucking do it. Oh my god, I would do it. Yeah. This, oh, this is so good. And I should probably put the link to this in the uh, in the chat because I think people and, might actually want to check this out. I'm sorry, know, I'm a kind of a huge Star Trek well, nerd. I think the three of us all are. So I mean, we're in good waters here. Um, 
it, it's really cool they're going to start with TOS oh, yeah. and then branch out because, yeah, I want to see the original uh, Enterprise in that virtual space. And then I want to be able to go, okay, I've seen everything. I want to go see the Enterprise D. I want to go see DS9. I want to see the Defiant. I want to see the original NX-01. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. I am so fucking, like, I have this massive grin on my face. This is so exciting. Yeah, I think it's... Uh... This is completely beyond my, my, my initial expectation of what it was. The thing about Chris Alex Pine, Ross? the thing about Chris Pine that that kind of freaks me out is once I realize he was Robert Pine from <gasps> Chips, <laughs> oh son, and I'm like, wait a second, I can't unsee his dad's face now every time I see him. And dude, Alex Ross is like a modern day Michelangelo. <laughs> he is no, he really is. He is no. I'm laughing at Assassin's oh. comment. Sir, yeah, Star Trek is cool and all, I guess, <laughs> but you know what would make it awesome? Lens flares and giving Kirk daddy issues. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, at least there weren't any floating letters in space that they had to fly around, you know. Well, let's let's let's, let's make Spock an emotional mess, you know, with with relationship issues, and let's yeah. make let's make a a a a, con a, a, a sympathetic uh, no fuck off That's no tired. no fuck with off. cumber cumber with the uh, penguin guy yeah rich Corinthian lava. <laughs> yeah. Again, like Chris Pine, it was good casting. The there was nothing behind it though. Which, you know, we were talking about slapping that that coat of veneer, that skin on things. That was yeah. part of the skin in that they 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 adver marketed it really well. There's a lot of flashy like dude, we hate we all three of us hate those movies, right? But can mm -hmm. any of us deny that the Enterprise didn't look fucking amazing? Oh like, yeah, just as a 3D model, like it looked amazing. So you have that no veneer, doubt. and then no you doubt. know that there was no substance there. <clears throat> even the, even Simon Pegg as Scotty, you know, the, the casting was great. They did, they they just and they did yeah, what the they could with great. what they were given. But there was they were given so little, and what they were given was just garbage. It really shows because you can see that that initial meeting of Kirk and Bones on the shuttlecraft, Carl Urban. Chris Pine, they're chewing they, that that scene is fantastic. Kirk mm -hmm. is just kind of like, oh my god, this guy's a crazy person. But then you can immediately see that they're kind of endeared to one another, even though they're both kind of mm -hmm. just doing their. It was, but the movie well, was. Tough. See, that is the rule that enter, that um, not Enterprise. What is the the new terrible one uh, with the Mary Discovery? Sue character? Discover no Discovery. Is that no, what it's called? Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. STD. Um, that's the rule that they broke. Roddenberry's rule, it was like practically his prime directive when he was writing, is that the cast, they can bicker, but they have to ultimately have like love and camaraderie and get along with each other. That's key. And Discovery broke that. They they broke it with the stupid Mary Sue mutineer and just all the crap. Just no. You know, it's and then and it almost offends me more that they've uh, taken a giant dump on the on uh uh, and the sound the Captain Enterprise Pine makes as it's just, moving through space is like a fucking F-14. Like, what yeah, I hate down. all of it. Like, they fuck keep doubling off. down on the mediocrity. Yeah, it's just stupid. Well, they figured they had they had a winning property and they couldn't lose no matter what they right. did, so they didn't yeah. try. They we'll figured they could... Yeah, we can just... We can just yeah, it'll be fine. This this will yeah. carry whatever stupidity we you know, saddle it, it with. It'll be there. But Whereas this is... No problem. Whereas this is just a labor of love, uh, a, a massive, massive love letter to Gene. Yeah. Well, this the project. first, I mean, the first episode of STD. Okay, fine. The second episode should have ended with she goes to jail. And then every episode after that is jail, 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 jail. She should yeah. have never left and Starfleet jail. Again, that should the, have been the whole series. Her adventures you. in Starfleet jail, making space toilet wine. That's it. <laughs> with Sorry. Her, with her cellmate, the fat uh, redhead. Yes, you um, heard that here on Minions of the Zoo. And again, yeah. Strange New Worlds. I thought great casting is Anson Mount as Christopher Pike. But again, because it's that JJ verse, it was just it's still trash. But it is trash. I would have loved love the show Vincent's if it was somebody else doing it. If it was somebody who loved the property doing that and they casted Anson Mount, I'd be like, 
all right, let's go. Let's let's fuck it. When they when they initially uh, cast a uh, uh, Bacula, I was like, oh my god, that's amazing casting. Hopefully, they don't screw the pooch with this. And you know, there's there's some stuff to be said about Enterprise, but I think he I did didn't a really actually good mind job. I didn't mind I think, season but, but one of Enterprise. His portrayal <clears throat> as uh, Archer was really good. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. So I Enterprise, tried, yeah. Enterprise suffers from the same problem that Space 1999 suffered from. Okay, no bear with me for a moment. Season one, not so terrible. Terrible, but not so terrible. I mean, it's not art. It's it's a thing. It's an entertainment thing, so it's fine. We set the bar a certain level. But they didn't make their numbers, and in both cases, they came in with season two, and it's like, hey, let's take that that acoustic kind of slow, somewhat sincere sounding opening and let's put some rock in it you know the same thing they did with the season two opener of space 1999 where it was like lasers and explosions and fight scenes you see it's like no and actually well i should talk about that sometime like why it sucked because they ended up actually pulling one of the executives from star trek taking him over to the uk and he tried to turn an english sci-fi show into an american sci-fi show and it sucked but uh yeah enterprise because it wasn't they just tried to make it extra sexy and extra rock and extra this and it like that season two yeah. man that was a sharp drop off i was fine with it being kind of slow paced and dark and them trying to stagger you know stumble their way through i was fine with that but apparently that wasn't enough action for most people and it's the same complaint you get with star uh, stargate universe all of my friends said it's too dark. I don't like it. I like it just fine. Just show. let Robert Carlyle chew up scenery. It's fine. Yep. It's fine. And what was um, the colonel's name? Because he was between him and Carlyle. Oh my God, those scenes, they got me. Those were power scenes. Carlyle can, can, can bring out the best in a lot of people. Even the, old, yeah. the captain guy, the, the young guy who's kind of, you know, he's kind of there. He's, he's not bad, but he's just kind of like a there character. You know, he's like your action guy kind of character. Um, even him in the scenes that he confronts uh, uh, Rush, he he gets a good performance out of him. I'm I I was I love that show. I don't care that it was dark because I don't want a carbon copy of Stargate SG One. I don't want a car carbon copy of Atlantis. I want different. I want I want pieces of of, of Star Trek, of Star Wars, of Stargate. Battlestar. I want different takes on things. I want different influences to shine through. Yeah. You know, when I end the show, this is probably what we're going to talk about for another hour. Mm. So for any of you who've ever thought about, hey, I might want to join this. If you're listed as streamable in uh, Minions <coughs> Discord, hit me up, send me a line. And if you want to come on, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to come on. Uh, and the other thing is not only do you get to participate in the show, but then you get to hang out and talk about uh, stupid stuff like Star Trek and Stargate <laughs> Universe after the show's over. And how so this wrong has been, I am about JJ Trek. Yeah, this has been your Minions of the Zoo for Saturday. Thank you, <laughs> panel. Thank you, chat. Zoo Thank is you. closed. Good night. Good night, everybody. Take care, everyone.